I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. And so we come in the wisdom of God to celebrate his love. We come to be washed clean and forgiven in this Eucharistic prayer. We come to be embraced. We come to be consoled. We come to be lifted up and encouraged as we continue this beautiful journey of life and faith. And yet as we come, we come with our fears and our burdens. The challenges of these days, especially the last few months, that have made it so difficult for us to function, to live, and even to believe. Hear me, people on the other side of the camera? It is difficult. But yet, we step into the reality of God's love and compassion, and we hear the words of our Savior spoken to all of us, those of us here, present in the temple of God, in the sanctuary, those participating in the live stream mass. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. The promise of God stands unshaken through the ages, through the old and the new covenant. God has never left us unattended. When Jesus came into this world, it was the voice of God that spoke through humanity, the voice of God that reminded us how much we are loved, how much his compassion will be ours to share even in the midst of the darkest moments. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened. There are many burdens these days, obviously, we are afraid of the illness, the virus that's ravaging humanity and has been, will probably continue for a while. We are afraid of the economy that may collapse upon us. We are afraid how we are going to pay our bills. We are afraid of so much. And with those fearful hearts, we step once again into the presence of God to be consoled, to be lifted up, to be encouraged. For in God we find our shelter. In, find, in him we find our consolation. In God we find our peace and our freedom. We celebrate Independence Day today, a beautiful reminder of what this world can give us, but yet even more so of what is given to us by God, the freedom of God's beloved children. That's who we are. This is what we share. This is what we receive. And the promise of freedom of God's children and his eternal kingdom is even greater. In 1883, Emma Lazarus wrote a beautiful poem it's called The New Colossus. The poem was written as a fundraising effort to raise money for the pedestal for a certain statue that we know as the Statue of Liberty. In the poem, Emma wrote those powerful words. They're very fitting into today's celebration, into our reality today into what we experience, especially the last few months. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free. In October of 1989, one of those people yearning to breathe free came to the United States. It was me. I was hoping for a lot, but I came in fear, not knowing what to expect. A new country, new continent, new language, new culture, new faces, new everything. 
And as the luck would have it, as I landed at the Metro Detroit airport, nobody was waiting for me. A kind soul, a beautiful lady, seeing my fear and confusion, walked up to me and explained to me how to use a payphone, which I had no clue at the time. She even gave me a quarter. And when she realized I needed to call the seminary, she was very happy because she helped someone who hopefully one day will be a priest. I imagine she was Catholic. Ever since that day, I've been so blessed and privileged to be part of this, what we know as the human experiment. That's how some people call it. I call it the greatest blessing humanity has received so far except Jesus Christ, the United States of America. I'm blessed and privileged to be living in a place where we enjoy that freedom that is provided to us by our Constitution. But that freedom, as we know, does not come free. It is being challenged, will continue to be challenged. But yet, freedom is a gift from God. And we continue to appreciate every aspect of that freedom that we still share, celebrate, and uphold this Independence Day. When we come in prayer today, there's a lot of fear, not just because of the medical reasons, but the societal reasons as well. A fear as to what's going to happen of our country. And fear can be crippling. Fear can give us a vision that doesn't necessarily reflect the actual reality. So here's an acronym for fear. False evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. All too often we watch the news, watch television, get on the internet, and all we hear about is fear that enters our hearts and it cripples us. Fear settles in. And it makes our vision not so clear any longer, even our relationship with God and our loved ones suffers because of that fear. Here is another acronym for fear. Forget everything and run. Have you ever tried to get close to a rabbit? It's impossible. Have you noticed? It's impossible because rabbit lives in fear, constant fear, day and night, 24-7, his entire life. Rabbit always runs. But we are not rabbits. We are children of God. We are the citizens of this beautiful country. We enjoy this great dignity and the many blessings that we still celebrate in our incredible society. There is so much more to us. So this Independence Day, we lift our hearts in prayer for our nation, for our future. We pray that what our ancestors have built over the centuries will continue to be built upon by us and the next generation. That the freedom provided to us by Constitution continues to be free and unchallenged. Into the state of fear we bring what we know and share as faith. And faith is the gift that heals, that cools down on a hot day, that brings warmth on a cold day, that makes us realize that God empowers us to continue on, that fear can be removed just like blinders can be removed. So here is an acronym for faith. Forward all issues to heaven. Forward all issues to heaven. That's what we do today once again in prayer, in our celebration of the Eucharist. That's what we do in our private prayer. We entrust all of that to God. Don't run away in fear. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. 
the words of Jesus, should penetrate deeply our very existence and whatever is happening in our neighborhoods, in our society, in our country. As a matter of fact, whatever is happening in the entire world. If you recall the great Pope John Paul II, his favorite expression that he used quite frequently was, do not be afraid. He often used that expression when he spoke to young people to make sure that they are not afraid of what is to come, of the future, that they live the freedom of God's children. Does anybody know how many times that phrase, do not be afraid, can be found in the scriptures, both the Old and the New Testament? 365 times. Sounds familiar, right? That number sounds familiar. That's how many days we have in a year. For every day of the year, there is an instance in the scriptures reminding us that we do not have to be afraid. God is with us. God will lift us up. God will console, forgive our sin. God will nourish us. God will continue to love us no matter what. And with God, we will continue celebrating the gift of our freedom, the gift of our Christian journey leading us to our beautiful destination, the kingdom of God in heaven. For after all, we are one nation under God with liberty and with justice for all. Amen.